in terms of who plays Fortnite, they're mostly young folks. So are these guys in school maybe doing other things during the summer and, and there will be a seasonal uptick once fall comes? Yeah, so I think that's part of it. I think kids are, you know, away, traveling, vacation, what have you. Fortnite's a very, like, social game. It doesn't really get a lot of that press, but kids play it together. They'll, like, bring all their phones together and play together. So you're not really having that environment. But once the school year starts, I think you will see more of an uptick. In terms of in-game purchases, Julia, what have we seen for Fortnite? I mean, it crossed, what, a billion dollars or so? Uh, is that... Well, yes, in it crossed... It cr it crossed a billion dollars back in May, but what we've seen is the rate of growth has slowed so dramatically that the question is whether maybe there's just a set market for this type of game. Obviously, it's a pretty big market, but how much bigger can it get? One question I have for Russ is how you think these games coming out from Activision and EA, the EA this fall are going to do when they embrace this massive multiplayer model, the 100 people that can play in a battle royale mode. Russ, do you think there's going to be demand for that kind of mode from a a, uh, from a game from an Activision or an Electronic Arts? Sure, yes. Absolutely no question about it. I think it's very smart for Battlefield to have that. Call of Duty has that mode as well. The difference is Fortnite is free, and that is a big difference. Uh, it makes a big difference for people getting those downloads, getting people playing. Um, I think those games will do really well. They needed to have those modes to be competitive in this space. But I think the Fortnite numbers are a little weird because uh, they have not externally released those numbers. So a lot of this is coming from data groups that are sort of speculating what the numbers are, but aren't. They, they could be a little soft. I do think you're going to see another uh, spike with Fortnite, but those games as well, I think you'll see them do quite well. My son is a big uh, Fortnite player, Russ, and mm -hmm. I think you've nailed it. The, the idea of of being able to play against other players is what really gets them excited. When my son yeah. comes back and he said, I won... It, and meaning I won against other players, it is really over the moon. So, yeah, absolutely. And, it, and it's also like people, kids are interacting with one another, friends of theirs yeah. in these games. And I, again, I don't think that gets a lot of attention these days. Russ, how do we know a peak is in? When I was a kid growing up, it was Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter. Those games are kind of by the wayside now. How do we know, what are the signs that a peak is in for a game? Well, I would say, uh, you know, Twitch was a good mention. Like, you look at Twitch, which is right now the biggest streaming service on the planet, and whatever game's up there is generally a good sign, like this is a game people are really interested in. Dota, as mentioned, is peaking in August. There's a big competition going on right now, so that's certainly helping that. I wouldn't be surprised, though, in September, you start, started to see uh, Fortnite back on that list. Julie, at the same time, there's a lot of competition for those who like gaming, who like to watch gaming. I mean, it's not just... Fortnite and PUBG. I mean, there's also uh, leagues that you can watch. NBA 2K, the big tournament is this weekend. So, uh, you know, how do you think that is sort of cannibalizing the number of hours one could devote to gaming? Or maybe there, that maybe that's unlimited. Yes. I don't know. I'm not a gamer. <laughs> I, I mean, look, there are only 24 hours in a day, but there are, are so many leagues, Melissa, as you mentioned. There's the Overwatch League from Activision Blizzard as well. There's the NBA 2K League. So I think there's a lot going on right now in the gaming space. But I also think if you look at the way people are spending the t their time, the question is whether gaming is competing with other things like social networking. One, one reason I heard speculated about is a reason why the social media companies such as Snapchat and Facebook showed flattening growth last quarter in the second quarter is maybe because of the popularity of Fortnite and other games like that. So the question is whether Fortnite is also competing, competing with the likes of Snapchat. I mean, how, much, how many hours are there in the day?